I spent nearly $100,000 to learn exactly how to get the best links on the planet for free. $97,819 was spent on seven digital PR agencies for the purpose of A, consulting. I actually got an agency to teach me exactly how they create viral stories that get published on the best websites on the internet. Purpose B was to reverse engineer. I hired six other agencies so I could see which were good so I could copy them and which were an absolute scam. Overall, my experiment worked. As an example, here's a simple study I conducted on the most influential tech companies. And yeah, that's Pornhub in third. It's picked up 42 links, including the DR94 for New York Times and my favorite Japanese beer company. Asahi Super Dry. I'm gonna share everything with you today. A repeatable process so you can build digital PR links yourself, how digital PR can be a complete waste of money if you don't know what you're doing, the results I got from spending that $97,000, and what separates the best digital PR agencies from the worst. But before I get started, click the link in the pinned comment to sign up for my free SEO training masterclass. It goes over all my top SEO tactics that I'm using in 2024 to get websites to the top of Google. This whole digital PR experiment started because of our old friend, FOMO. Back in 2020, the entire SEO industry could not shut the f up about digital PR. They get you links that money can't buy. I just got a link from WebMD. Oh yeah, I just got a DR200 link. The FOMO was real. But then I started digging into my biggest competitor, Barbend, who absolutely crushes with 1.7 million traffic per month. And lo and behold, look who started posting up digital PR pieces like this top 50 most fit cities in Indiana. This study picked up 224 referring domains, including DR91 Newsweek. So I was like, oh hell nah, we need to jump on this now. I did some digging around and found a digital PR agency that promised the world for 2,500 pounds per campaign, which is about $3,100. Side fact, most digital PR agencies are run out of the UK, no idea why. Once we were onboarded, they started brainstorming ideas on what kind of story they could pitch for our fitness site. This was back during COVID when people were sitting around all day eating Oreos and putting on the quarantine 15. So they came to me and said, let's make a contest. Lose weight and get paid money, $100 for each pound. It'll get shared around like crazy and journalists will love it. I was like, okay, $20 per pound and you got yourself a deal. How'd this idea do? It crushed. 54 referring domains including DR91 iHeart, DR85 Bente Minutos, DR84 Radio.com, and tons of newspapers. At $3,100 per campaign, 54 links comes out to a killer $57.42 per link. And these were damn good links too. I wanted more. So I got another two campaigns from them, but they couldn't repeat their results. Here's an Ahrefs report on the two other campaigns they ran. In the top campaign, they only got six links. Freaking six? The bottom campaign got 12, but absolutely none of them were due follow. Now the cost was $344 per link, which sucked ass. As you can imagine, I was pissed. Most digital PR agencies have minimums, where if they don't hit five links, they'll do another campaign until they hit five links. Either way, if they're only hitting their minimums like these guys were, you're not getting good value. It's the home run campaigns that make it worth it. So at this point, I was like, we gotta do this in-house. If I'm gonna bomb a digital PR campaign, I prefer it cost me time rather than $3,000. So I hired another agency to teach me their whole process. Here's what I learned. Executing a digital PR campaign happens in stages, starting with the ID. What is your idea for a newsworthy campaign? You want to come up with a topic that is related to your niche, but extremely shareable. The types of content that work best include surveys, industry reports and data studies, contests, expert opinions, and case studies. But the hack to making a successful campaign is to make sure your topic is trending. Is it currently on the mind of the masses? That make money to lose weight campaign worked because it was during the pandemic when weight gain was an issue. The most influential tech companies piece was during the money printing bull run where companies like Zoom and Nvidia were all people could talk about. Here's the thing. Now that we have ChatGPT, coming up with ideation angles is so easy it's stupid. Yo ChatGPT, Elon Musk recently challenged Mark Zuckerberg for a cage fight. How can I use this viral event and create a piece on my gambling website that can be used for digital PR? Look how freaking good this is. It suggested I create a betting odds and analysis breakdown. It could have a user poll on the page that would update odds in real time. And we can even give quote, humorous yet informative fighter profiles on Elon and Zuck as if they were Street Fighter characters. Another viral event from last year was the simultaneous release of the Oppenheimer and Barbie movies, which created the Barbenheimer meme. 
Bro, I don't know what all the hype is about. I don't even live in the States anymore. I'm out of touch. ChatGPD, help. The Oppenheimer movie and the Barbie movie were recently released on the same weekend. How could I have turned this viral event into an article that could be used for digital PR? Give me five potential article titles that would go on a fitness website. Number four would work for sure. You could whip up an article teaching exercises like atomic abs, Barbie burpees, and the constant plank. If you just got the plank's constant pun, give yourself a high five. Another hack is to put a negative spin on it. You can thank mainstream media for why this works. People have been sadly conditioned to pay more attention to bad news. That was the angle I was going for with a big business find study, which the DR85 Scotsman picked up with their name and shame headline, who paid the largest criminal fine in history and why. By the way, I'd like to give a shout out to Pitchbox, the sponsor of this video. Pitchbox is an end-to-end -end link building platform for SEO agencies, brands, and affiliate publishers. It's my outreach tool of choice and I use it across all my businesses. With Pitchbox, my team is able to streamline prospecting and outreach, achieve better email deliverability, and manage the whole link building process in one place. This is hands down the best outreach tool out there and a game changer for link builders. If I had to choose between Pitchbox and any other outreach tool, I'm going Pitchbox all day. If you want to make your link building process more efficient and effective, give it a try. To sign up with Pitchbox, use the link in the description and get 50% off your first month. Now back to the video. Next up is the data collection phase. If you're doing a survey or industry report, here's where you collect the data. Surveys are easy. You can run them yourself if you have an email list you can blast the survey off to. Or you can run cheap paid ads to a survey form. You can also compile existing data from public sources for your survey. Data is so easy to find online. For government databases, you have USA.gov for the states. Data.gov is another alternative. UK Data Service is the equivalent for the UK. Eurostat is great for other countries in the EU. And Statistics Canada is for Canada, obviously. Internationally, World Bank Open Data and United Nations Data are treasure troves. Pew Research Center is great for social issues, public opinion, and demographic trends. FBI Crime Data Explorer is great for crime stats. CDC is great for health data. Look, there's probably 10 more sites like these. Data is not the problem. Reaching journalists is the next step in the digital PR process. You've got your story created, now how do you get it in front of the right journalists that will publish it? A great tool you can use is Prowly. It lets you search for journalists based on their location, language, topic, and media type. So if you wanted to find English-speaking food journalists in the UK, you'd fill out their search form like this. They'll then give you a list of all the journalists that match those filters and how to contact them. Most of the digital PR agencies use Muckrack instead of Prowly. It's much more expensive, so unless you're starting a digital PR agency, I'd stick with Prowly. But if you want to save money on tools, you can always just search manually. For example, if you wanted to get on the Telegraph, do a site colon telegraph.co.uk in title food to find their food category. Now here's all the William Sitwell, Rob Crossens, and Diana Henrys that your little heart could desire. Now once you successfully stalked them and secured their email addresses, it's time to pitch your article. Here's some rules of thumb. Have a clear subject line. Be personal. Explain why your content is relevant to them. For example, if I surveyed each state in a study, I'd tease out the stats that I found for that journalist's particular state. Be as brief as you can. Cover who, what, where, when, how, and why as fast as possible. Include a press release, something that they could simply copy and paste and get up on their website as soon as possible. And for good measure, add a quote from your CEO. Here's what that would look like with an example. Subject line, study shows Pornhub, Tinder, and Facebook among the top 10 most influential tech companies. Hey Adam, I've been following your work and I've recently completed a study that you might be interested in on the topic of tech companies and their impact on society. There's a personalization and relevant step checked off. Some of the key highlights. The 10 most socially impactful tech companies of the 21st century, according to the study are Facebook, Google, Pornhub, blah, blah, blah. Here's how much people use them. 91% use Google more than once a day, 86%, blah, 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 blah. Diggity Marketing CEO Matt Diggity said about the study, measuring a company's impact on blah, 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 blah. And then we conclude with, I've attached a link to a press release in the event that you'd like to publish it. If you need any more information, please feel free to reply here and I'll get back to you. So now I was armed with the knowledge that I needed to do digital PR in-house. At the time, we had a keto diet niche site. The month was January, where people are most likely to start a new diet. The timing was perfect. We decided to do a piece around which states are the most keto-friendly. That way we had something specific to pitch to news outlets in each state. Yo, your state got number one for most keto-friendly restaurants. Hey, your state got number one for most keto influencers, and so forth. The campaign was perfect. It had timing, relevance, and scalability. How'd it do? Is six links good? No, excuse me, 11 historical links. What went wrong? We crushed the ideation, the data, everything, except the outreach. 
My hypothesis is that these journalist relationships are built over time and we were newbies and we had no relationships. Or our pitches sucked. I'll let you know what we ultimately figured out soon. In the meantime, we hired the same agency who we learned digital PR from to run six campaigns, one per month, for one of our legal websites. It was 3,000 pounds per campaign, so $3,700 with a 10 link minimum spread over six months for a grand total of $22,200. How'd it do? This was the worst experience to date. In all, we got exactly 60 low end to mediocre links, 24 of them were no follow, so pretty much useless. And to top it off, it took two years to complete. No, God, please, no! So now I'm like, what if our campaign didn't work because we learned digital PR from literally the worst digital PR agency on the planet? By the way, I'm not one to name and shame publicly, but if we know each other, feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to tell you who to avoid. Anyways, I was back to the drawing board. I still wanted digital PR, but I needed a consistent agency. I also really wanted to know WTF I did wrong so I could do it in house. So here's how I spent the remaining $65,000. By sampling and testing every digital PR agency that came across my path. I'll share the full results in a second, but here's some interesting anecdotes. One agency ran our exact same keto piece and got 60 links. So the problem really was with our outreach process. Apparently our pitch emails were too long and wordy and we just needed to get to the point. Excuse me. One agency didn't get a single do follow link. Not like this. Not like this. One agency had an idea for our data piece, but never got access to the data and had to refund us after a year of doing absolutely nothing. And one agency stood out as different, both in their approach to digital PR and the links they were landing. Here's a full list of results. As you can see, agency one hit two minimums, making their cost per link pretty high. Agency two did better, only missing one campaign, but overall still a pretty high cost per link. Agencies three and four bombed completely, and five and six bombed, let's say mostly. Agency seven is the only one that didn't miss a campaign, and thus you can see their cost per link was the best. Enter search intelligence. Let me first say that my skepticism was through the roof before I sampled these guys. Not only are they the most expensive digital PR agency, but they're aggressive marketers and sponsor nearly every SEO podcast on the planet. Nonetheless, they're consistent. They always do a good job because they take a different approach than other agencies. Here's the thing, they don't create content for your site. They don't create a big piece of content like this formatted all nicely. These pieces take time to create, time to design, and what happens if it doesn't work? Instead, they figure out a small set of data, pitch that data to journalists, and just say, yo, these guys collected the info, just link to their homepage. It looks like this. Here's dr82eatthis.com. There's a bunch of data here. Minnesota is the number one most exercise obsessed state, and there's no link to any story, just a link to Barben's homepage. By doing it like this, search intelligence doesn't have to commit to creating a piece. They can pitch their data to a few journalists. If it doesn't get any interest, they can tweak it, pivot, or whatever. It's faster to see results and they can do hundreds of these in parallel, making it easier to blow past minimums. Once I saw this way of doing things, I facepalmed so hard my wife had to come into the office to make sure I was okay. And obviously I changed my internal process to copy it. Here's the kind of results I'm getting. Campaign one, 20 links. Campaign two, 22 links. Campaign three, 27 links. As you can see, I'm getting better over time. The key is fast iteration. Because I don't have to commit to a single ideation and build out the content, the feedback loop is fast AF. I'm also continuing to use search intelligence on one to two campaigns per month for my super serious projects. Here's one of those sites in the legal lead generation space doing better than it's ever done before. If you want to try them out, you can use the code I've been using, SI1000, to save $1,000. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one.